welcome to the Once Again Podcast. We are your hosts, Ashley and Jason. In this episode, we'll be discussing episodes 7 and 8 of The Mandalorian Season 3. We will be recapping the events of these episodes and possibly discussing where we expect the show to go from here. Consider this your one and only spoiler warning. So lie to the Shadow Council about your cloning project, pull a Gandalf and tell the Imperial troops, YOU SHALL NOT PASS! Ha- have your magical baby pull a Deus Ex Je- Jedi and enjoy this episode. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, so we start off with Season 3, Episode 7, called Chapter 23, The Spies. And correct me if I'm wrong, Ashley, but isn't spies plural? Meaning more than one? Yes. Okay, all right. I, I, just, wanna, I just wanted to point that out right now at the, at the top of it. Uh, it was directed by Rick... Femua, Femua, which we got his name wrong last time, and I'm going to get it wrong again here. And it was written by John Favreau and Dave Filoni. It premiered April twelfth, two thousand twenty-three. So um, we're going to be doing our loose format yep, recapping always. again. But uh, we start off. We're on Coruscant with uh, uh, Elia Kane, uh, and she's going through some back alleys, and she meets one of those little probe droids mm-hmm. to give to give a message to Moff Gideon. Which I thought that her code name, like TK two two seven five or whatever, I thought that was something. And it I, wasn't. No, I looked that. up and it, it just came back to her. I was like, "Isn't that a reference to something?" No, I, I guess. You know I... what I find interesting is I don't know if we'll ever come back to her character, but I find it fascinating whatever she's doing, whatever she's up to here, like yeah. who she is and everything. Like, well, I mean, she has this like weirdly big role, but also not a very big role. Like, what's she doing? Well, that, I, I guess just to spoil the episode from the top, she's the only spy in this yeah. episode. I kept waiting for something throughout the whole episode. There's lots of points where I was like, oh my god, like what's Axe Wolves up, up to? <laughs> right? Oh, like, what, what is the armorer doing? Oh, these convenient yeah, other night owls. Yeah, a lot of people owl. doing like yeah. weird things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these other Mandalorians who are going to show them where the forge is. Oh, oh yeah, sure, right? Sure. Like all this crazy yeah. stuff. Um, but no, just one spy, even though the episode's called The Spies, plural. Oh, like I, I watch these episodes with other people sometimes, and literally we were like... Oh my god, don't follow the other Mandalorians. They're leading you to a trap. It's a trap. And then it wasn't. And we were like, so they're good? Well, it was. But one or two of them also got killed in the trap. Like, it, it, like. I'm not sure it's a trap they knew of, though. Like, that's that's the problem. Like, obviously, like. It was a trap, but, yeah. like, not one that these Mandalorians knew of. Like, they walked into it. All of them walked well, into it. We're, skip, we're skipping ahead a little bit in, in the recap. We'll get there. But, but I do have to say, when, <laughs> when they were chasing after the Imperial troopers, I was like, man, these hallways are getting real Imperial looking. Now, granted, they're in the heat of battle and everything like that, but I was like, what's going on? Like, are they going to end up in an Imperial base? And yes, they did. <laughs> like, I was, oh, okay. I think... And I had no problem saying this out. What made me angry about the Imperial base is I'm like, Din Djarin came to this planet before and, like, nobody has said anything about, like, I think it was very obvious that the reason they didn't want people to go back to Mandalore is because they knew that there was a base there. Like, yeah. the Imperials didn't want them. Exactly. But at the same time, like, I'm like, Din was there, Bo was there. Like, clearly, they're, like, they were there earlier but didn't get caught. Like, there wasn't, like, an immediate message somewhere going... Din Djarin found us. But it, like, it, it, well, I don't know. It's a whole planet. Like for like, Din might I have agree, been on the opposite side. I agree, but also side. like he was looking for the Great Forge and yeah. was looking for the the water. So yeah. like clearly he was in the same area ish. Yeah, but I I will also. But they didn't also like they didn't feel like it didn't censor a entire spaceship coming into the planet. Like that's what interests me. Well, like it did fix something <laughs> for me though because um the ties that followed them back to. Bo-Katan's castle and blew it yes. up. I remembered that Obi Wan quote. I don't remember it exactly, but we, he when they're on the Millennium Falcon and he says that like you know a tie couldn't get out here in space by it. It's when they're arriving at the Death Star. Yes, and he's like it's a short range vessel. There's no mm-hmm. like there there had to be a base somewhere nearby. There was a base on. on there was on, a base. On, yeah, like so it, it fixes. So that. so maybe you're right. Maybe they did notice. They yeah. just waited to attack. But I yeah. don't know. It just seems very odd. But getting back to the beginning of the episode, yes, getting back uh, to the beginning, Kane Kane tells uh, Gideon about uh, how uh, the Mandalorians have come together and they defeated the pirates, which I guess means Gideon did hire the pirates at some point. It's mm-hmm. never directly explained, and that other pirate that escaped never came back. So uh, Vane, yes. I think his name was. Yeah. So maybe he'll come back at some point. Yeah, like, next season or a spinoff show. I don't or know. Something. Maybe he'll just 
but, die somewhere yeah, and never come back in the cold knows? vacuum of space <laughs> yes um or maybe and i i looked into this uh remember how i said in a previous episode i got death trooper vibes yes. when they were it is death troopers like that's yep. what the book was called they now refer to it as uh <coughs> project blacklight i think or mm. something like that um and because uh, now there are canonical death troopers from yes. gideon like his yes. robot troopers or whatever but yes uh so he's like, oh, damn it, the Mandalorians are coming together? This sucks. Well, I better go have a meeting with the Shadow Council. Which, let, let me just say, we know we know the audience that the Empire are Nazis. Like, it's yes. it's a very thinly veiled metaphor. But in, in their world, if you're a member of something called the Shadow Council, <laughs> you have to realize you're the bad guy. <laughs> like, you can't be like, no, we're doing good for, for the galaxy. You're on the Shadow Council. So I will say the Shadow Cancel part of this episode is probably my favorite part. Like, mm. lore-wise, a lot of, like, interesting things I yeah. feel like we're just, like, hinted at and dropped. Also, we got our first, like, real mention of Thrawn, like, yes. really intentional, like, Thrawn. Yeah, Imperials talking about him, not just, not which just Ahsoka. Is, which is also my gripe about this later, about the name dropping of Thrawn here, which oh. I think you already know where I'm going with this tour at the end of... I, I thought you were going to mention uh, the name dropping of Hux. We get Hux's that was also interesting. Too. Dad or grandfather yeah, or something. Also interesting. So, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Nazism runs in that family. <laughs> but so anyway, uh, Gideon's like, hey, I need more troops, including three pit, uh, Praetorian guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and that was fun. yeah, and and a bomber and everything like that. And they're like, no, blah blah blah. And he's like, listen. Thrawn's not around like it's time for someone new to be in charge and the Mandalorians are getting back together and they're like no not the Mandalorians not the Mandalorians <laughs> not all 100 of them or whatever <laughs> right. it is. like all right yeah sure have whatever you can have whatever you need so they they send him what he needs and then back on Navarro Bo-Katan shows up in style with uh her uh group of former followers now new followers again since she beat axe wolves and everything and I do, I did like how uh, uh, Grief Karga pointed out the difference between an Imperial ship and everything, and how it has the Mandalorian <laughs> crest on yes. it and everything. Um, and the two tribes come together, and they're not getting along very well. And of course, Bo-Katan says, "I, you know, I need volunteer. We're gonna, we're gonna go to the planet. We're gonna keep the most people above atmosphere, and we're gonna send in a recruit, uh, like a, a recon team, recon basically. team. Thank you. Yes, and I need people from both sides. Yeah, like and both tribes. Yes, and Din Djarin is the first to volunteer. <laughs> always, and he always and he volunteers Grogu too, and then I believe the next one was Axe Wolves. I think so, and then Paz right after. And then after. Paz. Yeah, if it wasn't Axe Wolves, it was um, it was a girl. Uh, what Kreese? I think her name is it, Sasha Banks' character. Yeah. I, I forget. I forget. I think it's Kreese. Uh, and, and but as soon as X will as soon as X wolves volunteers pass is like me too, me too <laughs> like, right. like I'm the tough guy of this group um even though all X X wolves does is get his ass kicked by everybody on this show <laughs> he does he does keep coming back for more You're Ashley so right yeah Ashley's a little sick folks I'm sorry um I, uh, I'd say sick uh I'm slowly being poisoned by my work office with its mold and dust. My eyes are so watery. I apologize. Yeah. I'm trying. But so he does, X Wolves does keep coming back for more, even though he just gets his ass kicked by everybody all the time. Um, he's like the Rocky of that universe. Like he, I know. I'm like, are we supposed to be impressed with X Wolves? <laughs> um, I think the worst part is he survives and not Paz. <laughs> and then after Paz and after X and after uh, the girl, like Keys or Creeves or whatever, I can't remember her name. But after they all volunteer, um, the cannon fodder then volunteers a bunch of <laughs> nameless Mandalorians that we don't know who they Red are. Red shirts. Yeah, and then yes, exactly. <laughs> and then and then the armorer, last of all. Yes, of vol- course. Volunteers. And she's together. like, I'll go as yeah. well. Which like... is like, hmm, this is suspicious. <laughs> hmm, are you I'm a just spy? Like, Let's go fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, Girl, I need you to fight. <laughs> but before they go, now this bothered me about the episode. Before they go, uh, Grief Karga gives Din. And Grogu, a gift of he's had IG eleven rebuilt, and now he's known as IG twelve, which really bothered me because we know from other stuff that there's an IG eighty eight assassin droid out there, and this was IG eleven, so presumably there's already an IG twelve. Probably, out there. yeah. So why not just call this IG eleven B 
or something like you, you know like i was just like no you're stealing ig12's <laughs> identity right oh, now God. um <laughs> hey listen it bothered me i'm not but it is uh adorable and we get to see one of those little babu freaks uh say the word m- <laughs> in it um yes <laughs> Which, to- he totally does say that. Like, yes, he does. Yeah. Um, but, yes, because Grogu squeezed him in a previous episode, and he was very upset about that. No squeezies. Uh, no squeezies. Yeah, and then he drops the mf in there. But Grogu gets in the IG-12, and uh, Din's like, no, he doesn't know how to operate it. And Grogu's just like, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Because yeah. the only things IG-12 can say are no and yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, then they're going around on the street, and Grogu uses IG-12 <laughs> to steal some food, and, and he's eating it real quick and everything. And Amanda's just like, God damn, yeah, this, stop. This, this isn't going to work for me, kid. <laughs> like, um, but they leave, they arrive on Mandalore, and uh, the recon team goes down, goes down there, and they're searching around and everything. And then conveniently enough, this ship shows up on the horizon. Now, I will say... I was very worried that they were going to have it be Boba Fett. Oh my god. <laughs> and I was like, oh, please don't be Boba Fett showing up right now. Be like, hey, what are you guys doing here? What are you guys doing here? I'm also yeah. here. How are you guys? Um, What's up? But it was... We're taking back Mandalore? Why didn't you invite me to take back Mandalore? <laughs> yeah. It was former members of uh, the Night Owls that survived the, the Great Purge and have been on Mandalore ever since. Like, just... I love them. Be like, is that Lady Bo-Katan Kreese? Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. And they pledge to her and everything. And it's like, hmm, what are these guys? Awfully convenient. Oh, they're here and they'll take you to the Great Forge, huh? Hmm, very convenient. And then they're on their little, I don't know, what you, I guess it's a ship. It's uh, like a land ship. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. And they're going around and they see a giant monster. Well, before the giant monster. Oh, here comes Pumpkin. Before the giant monster, um, Paz and Axe come to... They're playing chess, presumably, yes. like some form of chess against each other. And uh, Paz does an illegal move, according to Axe, and it gets to the point where they're going to knife fight each other. Um, and then Grogu stops it, like, yes. no, yeah. no, yeah. no. Din says to Bo, should I step in? And, and she says, no, no, no one from either side can step in, blah, blah, blah. And they're fighting, and then, yeah, Grogu gets in there with a the no, 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 and... Uh, Bo says to Din, you've trained your apprentice well. And he said, I didn't tr- teach him that, which, you know, Jedi way, peace, man of peace and everything like that. No fighting, killing tough, got to kill other things. Yeah, that's right. Prove your manhood later. So uh, they're they're on the ship going further and yet another giant dinosaur monster shows up to ruin their day on of a course. different planet now. Now, I thought it was actually going to be the Mythosaur at first. Yeah, that's what um, I thought too. But it's not. It's just some giant monster thing um and for some reason they decide to keep steering the ship towards it even though they can see it for these are very dumb mandalorians but they and this is why the mandalorians are all dead because as great fighters they are they all have the brains the size of peas yeah it destroys the ship they go into a cave which oh on my i watched it a second time just to (laughs) refresh my memory and everything on my second viewing of it i noticed it was Paz and uh, Axe that grab Go- uh, Grogu and grab IG-12 to get him off the ship. Like, I, I, you know, it's the first time, like, two of them just grab him and, like, fly, yes. fly the robot away. But it was the two, and I was like, that's really cute. Like, it was like, he stopped the two of them from fighting, and then the two of them saved him. Like, I was, like, I was just like, oh, that's cute. But they end up in this cave, and the Night Owl remnants are going to show them how to get, they're like, yeah, we're not too far anyway, let's just go down there. They get down, they see the Great Forge. The Mandalorians who remember Mandalore are like, oh, this was our great society, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then they hear jetpacks off in the distance, and they're like, are there more Mandalorians? And, but no, it's uh, Stormtroopers, a new division Best of Stormtroopers. Best car enhanced yeah. Stormtroopers. Yes, exactly. And they start shooting at the Mandalorians. The Mandalorians are shooting back, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, we need reinforcements. And Axe says, I'll go get them, and flies up through a little hole in the ceiling that um you know paz lays down f- some fire so he can escape and everything and it's like hmm what's oh that? and I, I think for a minute, the armor has also left at this point oh, from that yes. giant dino like dinosaur battle whatever yeah she took all the like broken injured people up in the ship and took yes. them back up so yeah yeah so she's not around which is suspicious <laughs> he's not around that's suspicious but no there's only one spy in, in the whole thing even though it's called the spies i was waiting the whole time for it to turn out who it was even i'll say this this would have been a really disgusting turn in just a, in just a moment when 
they get captured by and Din Djarin gets separated from them. I was like, hmm, Din got separated, huh? And and uh Gideon just wants to see wants to talk to him in his office. Hmm, that's suspicious. Not that they would have done that, but it's still I was waiting to find out that there was a second spy somewhere. Um but yeah, Gideon reveals that, you know, he's built himself a Mandalorian armored uh, a Beskar suit. Which also has like robotics in it and everything like that. It's a real mm -hmm. advanced suit. Uh, captures Din, has him taken off by uh, some stormtroopers, and then he's like, "You know what? Just kill the rest of them. Um, I'm sick of these Mandalorians." And uh, Bo's Bo manages to cre uh, create a hole in the rear door using the dark saber. They start filing out. Paz stays behind to keep everybody. Be a freaking badass. Yeah, and literally kills all of them. Yeah. And then the Praetor all the troopers, and then the music drops, and it's yeah. the Praetorian Guard, and you're like, "Oh, yeah. it did send the guard." Yeah, and oh. the thing that upset me about that is that I wish he could have at least got a hit in on them. Oh yeah, that was they take them right down and like just and like you know Paz would have hit them in like reality. Like, yeah, Paz just destroyed a contingent of the, the stormtroopers. Storm he, took, troopers. he took them all he down. He took down like twelve even, stormtroopers. Give me a break. Even when his uh. <laughs> minigun overheated and he threw it down he then beat other stormtroopers to death with his hands like he clubbed them to death like and yeah could... i would have liked to see paz like take out at least one praetorian yeah. guard uh, like maybe... or like hit them yeah hit them like maybe he couldn't kill one of them but in the next episode granted din's gonna have a little help from a little magic force baby <laughs> but he kills all three of them <laughs> and i was like you can't... And i'm supposed to believe din is better than paz yeah, come on i i I'll I'll get into that at the end of, uh, end of it because I think there's there's something going on that isn't discussed on the show at all, <laughs> and we'll get we'll get into it. But uh, so the episode ends on Paz's dead body, and it's, and I I'm so happy that I waited until episode eight came out to watch episode seven because it would have driven me nuts that week in between like it ending on Paz's death because we were. You know, we've said how awesome he is in the past, and he is awesome. I watched um, this with my one friend, and because I was on vacation, he had to wait two weeks to get to episode oh, eight. Oh gosh, I'm like, that's you rough. Poor child, I'm sorry. But so now we're diving into season three, episode eight, chapter twenty-four, "The Return," and once again, directed by Rick. You know who you are. We we can't say your last name, uh, and written by John Favreau, <laughs> and it premiered April nineteenth, twenty twenty-three. Uh, so Bo's escaping with the Mandalorian, like the yes. other Mandalorians and everything. Um, and they managed to end up in like this little cave that has greenery growing in it and everything like that. And Din's being taken off by these two stormtroopers. And then he's like, all right, well, screw this. <laughs> he starts beating them up. <laughs> he gets himself free. Grogu shows up and, you know, which I, in rewatching it, the one stormtrooper I have to give credit to, Din stabs him in the throat then uses the other stormtrooper's flamethrower on him, and then shoots him. And that's what finally kills him. Like, I was like, ooh. Like, I was like, that guy, that guy was tough. He got stabbed in the throat, <laughs> set on fire, and then it was finally the shot that took him down. And then Grogu, uh, or no, I'm sorry, he broke his neck. Yeah. Like, he, he broke his neck, and that's what took him down. And then Grogu kills the other one, um, or at least knocks him out, whatever. Um, and then a, a nice little callback was he started spraying Din with the healing uh, mist that mm -hmm. IG-11 has. Um, and he's like, all right, well, uh, which I, I did, I, I, at first, at first viewing it, I thought, oh, it's stupid that Grogu broke off from the group, but I was like, no, he could sense where Din is. Like, he was like, gotta go save dad. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd go after him and Axe makes it back to the ships and he's like, Hey, <laughs> lady <laughs> producer pumpkin has the zoomies. Yeah. He was freaking out. Um, <laughs> But anyway, Axe makes it back to the ships, and he says, uh, Bo-Katan needs help. He sends all the other Mandalorians and, and all the other little ships to go help him, and he says, I'll be the distraction with this ship. Yeah. They fly down into the clouds. The ties fly up out of the clouds, and oddly enough, none of them collided into each other through nope. those storm clouds. Uh, and Axe does. He like I, I was waiting for him to betray them or something, but no, he was he was legit the whole time. I thought Axe was gonna die. I thought it was gonna be like, oh, Paz saved them all, and now Axe is gonna do the same thing. Yeah. And then Axe, like, jumps from the burning ship, just like... Yeah. I was like, okay, Axe, whatever. For me, it was a really cool callback. Um, this is... I, I think it was lately possibly inspired by this. There used to be an amazing cartoon show called uh, Justice League, and it was based on uh -huh. the Justice League. And in 
the season one finale, I think it was. To make a long story short, they're using the Justice League's watchtower that's in space. Mm -hmm. uh, on it is Batman, Martian Manhunter, and The Flash. They get everyone off the thing. And then Batman stays behind because there's a enemy on the ground. He's going to drive the watchtower into there like yeah. base to blow it up and everything like it, it's a it, and like it's a really emotional scene if we ever do batman the animated series for the for our podcast after we're done with that we're going to skip ahead and do justice league we'll skip batman beyond and all there's good episodes <laughs> of that but uh and then there's good episodes of the superman cartoon show but we'll just skip and go right to justice league and uh the animated series because it's an it's an awesome scene between batman and superman but anyway i'm getting off sub way off subject here but yeah, Axe drives the ship into the base, yeah. but that's going a little bit further ahead. So Grogu and Din go on a little mission to find Gideon. And um, a nice little callback was uh, Din calls out to R5. I didn't know that R5 was there the whole time, but he was. Yeah, that, that was confusing <laughs> to me. Like, okay, R5. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, I guess they all have those Avengers Bluetooths in their helmets now. Yeah. Because they could all just talk to each yeah. other like that. Thing. We've seen in Star Wars before, you have to use, like, little handheld speakers yeah. to communicate with other people, but... Mandalorians yeah. have it in their helmets. <laughs> yeah, they have the Avengers Bluetooths in their Makes helmets. Makes sense, I guess. They yeah. all have helmets. Why yeah. not? Yeah, that's fine. But they, um... R5... And this is something, too, that really bugs me about the Imperial uh, setup and everything. But this is from the originals, too. R5 hacks a little terminal. Like, it's just, like, one little outlet in one yes. spot, and you can access all the information in the entire base. Like, that's really, really annoying to have that. Especially since it, when R5, at least when R2 did it, it was in, like, the Death Star in a spot. Like, yes. you could be like, okay, this was the command control or something. Like, there, this was... a. a, a location in the thing r5 does it from the hangar like yeah. he, he just goes into the hangar and hacks it. but he has a little battle with a little mouse droid and that mouse droid comes back with some with of those mouse, mouse droid, droid bites <laughs> yeah <laughs> and r5 just takes off on his jetpack he's <laughs> yeah he's like never mind which i did like how he looked over the edge and he was scared it's like you just used your jetpack buddy like your little thrusters like <laughs> what are you scared of falling over the edge for but um <clears throat> while they're doing that uh Oh, and Din has a badass fight against all these elite stormtroopers, presumably, which I really wish that the last two had just, like, laid down their weapons. Like, it would have been a great comedy mm -hmm. beat. Like, he beats the hell out of all the other ones, and then the last two are just like, we give up, and, like, walk yeah. away or whatever. But he beats all of them, and they find all these clones of Gideon. Yes. And it was very creepy. It was. Yeah, I didn't know what it was at first until they literally showed the close-up of him, and, like, <laughs> yes. it's his face and everything. And Din destroys them because he has like the shut off switch right there yeah. or whatever. It blows up all the tanks. I was like, yeah, go <laughs> um, Din. And then he's confronted by Gideon himself, and Gideon's very upset about that. Uh, he says that. Well, Gideon's like, you already ruined it because he wouldn't let me take Grogu's blood to make them like Super Saiyan well, Jedi clones of me. But he, he does say, like, they, they had the one thing I never did, which was the Force. So I guess presumably he injected them with metaphorians. I don't know if that actually worked because the way he, the way I read that sentence or like heard it was that he's like, you, you know, you took away from me. Like I could, I still couldn't give them what I like wanted. Like, they weren't alive yet. Yeah. 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 They weren't alive yet. Yeah. That's true. But I don't know. And, oh, we forgot to mention in the Shadow Council uh, part, they talk about Project ne Necromancer. Yes. Presumably that's the Emperor. Yes. I don't I don't know if that was... But they also mentioned Gideon doing stuff, and he's like, I'm not doing anything with cloning. Yeah. What are you talking about? I still don't understand. I'm going to... <coughs> I'm going to have to read the novelization of Episode Nine to maybe find this out, but I, I still don't understand whether that was supposed to be the original Emperor's body on Exegold. And, like, the clones were doing other things? Or was that a clone of the Emperor that was just yeah. messed up? Because it's very difficult to clone Force users. Because, mm -hmm. like, they have the Metachlorians and that messes up the cloning process for whatever reason. Um, but anyway, we're getting off subject. So Din and, uh, and Gideon start getting into a fight. Which uh, Gideon's actually winning because of all the technological advances he's made with this armor and mm -hmm. everything. And then uh, Grogu... Uh, Grogu shows up and he's like, "No, like I'm gonna balance the fight out." But then the Praetorian guards show up and they go 
chasing after Grogu. And Grogu's like flipping around, doing all sorts of Jedi <laughs> things. Grogu's having a great... He laughs during the fight. He's having a great time with this. He's a little psychopath. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> It's going to take Luke Skywalker showing up and cutting off his head at some point. Like, season five of Little the Little do we know, Grogu is the new leader of the Imperials. Yeah. Like, Grogu, Grogu's evil. Grogu is the spy. That's yeah, the answer we're that's looking it. for. Oh, that makes sense. Grogu's the spy. But yeah, he was laughing during this fight with the Praetorian guards. And he's just like, oh, this is great. I'm, I'm loving this. Um... Then Bo-Katan shows up with all the other Mandalorians, and she takes over the fight with Gideon and says, go rescue your kid. And then uh, Din goes in, starts fighting the Praetorian guards, and him and Grogu together kill them. Which, like, oh, Grogu was pushing them away and taking away their weapons and everything like that. But like I said, it bothered me that Paz couldn't, couldn't even, get, even get a hit. Couldn't even like, get a hit in. And, these two kill them. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, you know, you have Grogu there, he's got the Force, it is an extreme advantage over everything. But, like, I don't know. It just bothered me that Paz didn't even get one hit in on them. Yes. Um, but so they beat, they kill the Praetorians, then they, and then Gideon's beating up Bo-Katan. Breaks, Destroys the dark saber. Breaks the dark saber. Yeah, and is about to kill her. And she has a line, something along the lines of Mandalorians are stronger together. Enter Din and Grogu. Din you, like push yeah. him into yeah. a resulting blast. Yeah, Din shoots from w- w- wolves uh, ramming the Mandalorian ship into the base. Finally, yes, yeah, he shows up. At their big ships on fire. It's going down anyway. And yeah. He's like, well, I'm going to take out the yeah, base. Yeah, <laughs> he t- it is a good move to use. Um, he flies out the window to to save himself. Mm-hmm. Um, Gideon blows up in the explosion, presumably. You know, we don't yeah. see a corpse, but, well, you know, but who knows if there actually is a working clone yeah, out there somewhere? There's you know? a clone somewhere else. No, not not a bad idea. They kind of left that uh yeah possibility open. Yeah, and then um, Grogu uses his force powers to put a little bubble around him, uh, Din and Bo-Katan, so they're all safe. Which that's something too is that like he's they're showing he's really coming into his power because in season one anytime he used the force he would like pass out take a nap yeah. immediately afterwards and here he does fall down after protecting them but he's still like okay then uh, we skip ahead a little bit I believe in time and I think so and we're on we're on Mandalore and they've like they're starting to rebuild the society and they the... restarted the forge which is a really cool scene yeah like... it is yeah and ax you know yells for mandalore and they <laughs> yeah. all start yelling everybody's for mandalore. like for mandalore and yeah. banging their yeah. armor yeah um and then uh din goes down into the waters where they're uh indoctrinating another child <laughs> into this cult uh it's paz Vizzle's kid actually yeah. that they're doing that too i think yeah. his name is ragnar like yeah, ragnarok so like ragnar yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and then Din is like, I want to make Grogu formally an apprentice because yeah. obviously he's like done so much work and the armor's like, well, he can't talk, so he can't take the crate, so he can't do anything. Yeah. And he's like, well, his parent and Din's like, well, you know, his parents will allow him. And she's like, well, we don't know who his parents are. And he's like, well, I'm adopting him. And it's like, okay, yeah. okay, dad, we all knew you were already dead. Yeah. Let's uh, make it formal, though. And Grogu And squeals. Grogu is now Din <laughs> Grogu. Which I want to talk about. Does that mean Din is the last name? Like, is it like an Asian, like how, you know, in like Asian Maybe. culture, the last name comes first? Because everyone else in Star Wars, like we have Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker. Well, even Skywalker. like Bo-Katan Kryze. Kryze yeah. is the family name. Right, so. exactly. Uh, but that, that's what I mean. Like every everyone else that we've gotten generations of, even Hux in the pre, like we, we have Hux is the last name. But now we have Din Djarin and Din Grogu. Like, I was wondering if it's, like, supposed to, like, in Asian cultures, they have the last name first. Maybe, because, but then it's, like... The family name, I should say. They have the family name But then, like, why is it like that? Because Bo-Katan Kree's Paz Vizsla is the last name. Vizsla is a well-known family. Yeah. Like... I I don't know. Why is the armor just the armor? Like... Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't have a name yet. But maybe at some point Ahsoka will come and put her head next to the armor and be like, oh, your name is whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but like Han, we'll get a name. Han Solo, Ben Solo, everyone that we have generations of, the, the family name comes second. But I, I was just thinking, I'm like, that's interesting if they do it, that Din is the family name. I, I just thought it was interesting. Interesting. Um, and then they tell Din and Grogu that they have to leave and go have their own little adventures, um, which is something that I... like. Here's something that I was thinking about, given this whole season. Do you think Din Djarin, since he never takes off the helmet and everything, 
do you think you have a really bad body odor? Oh my god. And they're, they're like, no, Din, you have to go away. You know what you have to do? You have to go take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> if you go take a bath, your sins will be forgiven. Like, and then and now he's like around again. They're like, oh no, you and Grogu got it. Because I was like, it's not going to bother Grogu because Yoda lived on Dagobah, which presumably stinks, for like years. And he, and he like, so that species is accustomed to bad smells. Oh like, my god. Like, I was like, uh, do you think Din Djarin has bad body odor? And they were just like, no. We or do you think they're all jealous of how, <coughs> of how much Din Djarin shows them all up by, by doing things that they can't do? And I don't know. They don't want him around. It's very odd. Yeah. But he, he goes back, first he goes to whatever planet the, uh, um, the bars at yeah that the new republic members are yeah. on which we have a little cameo of most of the directors of the show yep they have, they're over in the corner and uh he's talking to teva, carson teva yep. carson teva and he says listen i'm gonna work for the new republic on a case-by-case basis because I, I gotta train the child yeah you know gotta be a good dad now. yeah i want to you know which i'm, I'm like I think hunting down Imperial remnants are, is a much more dangerous line Job of, than, it, right? than just bounty hunting, like, the people that you have been. Right? But like, whatever you think is okay. best in. Um, but, and they take a little um, battle droid head there and everything, and, and that's that allows IG-11 to come back and everything. They go back to Navarro, and uh, Din takes up res- residency there, and he gives the people of Navarro their new sheriff, which is IG-11, with a new paint job on yeah. him and everything. And, and he's got a little house there, and it's cute. And yeah. Grogu's playing with frogs. You know, everybody's happy. It looked very much like um, Obi Wan's house in Episode Four, yep. like in A New Hope, and everything. Like it was just the design of it. And Similar, yes. Yeah. And then we do a little, which I saw people complaining about this, but this is very Star Wars. Go back and watch the original movies. The circle, like closing in, and everything. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, the, no, like George Lucas did like side swipes and up swipes and the circles closing and everything like i saw people complaining about oh that didn't feel like star wars i'm like that's, that's very that's saying. very star wars like the the circle closing and everything it hanging on grogu and din for a moment not necessarily but no the closing circle like i think most of the movies end that way yeah like, like when it I goes they do yeah but eh, whatever. People will complain about anything. When it comes to Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, but uh, that's that's the end of the season, I think. Uh, that is, and I will tell you my biggest gripe because it's really at the end of this episode because I think my expectations were probably a little too high, but I don't think there was any reason for me not to. You know, we got the Thrawn name drop last yeah. last episode, and before this episode came out, we had Star Wars celebration over in the UK, and they did do a first look at Thrawn in the Ahsoka show, and I was like. We're getting it. It's coming. Mm. He's going to be at the end of this episode as like a little like teaser. Like, <laughs> Thrawn! Thanos grabbing the Infinity Gauntlet that... and saying, fine, I'll do it myself. Yeah, like yeah. something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Like definitely expecting like a little like maybe mid credit scene, like yeah. something. And then it didn't happen. And no. I was like, why did we even bring Thrawn's name up? Like, why did we do this? Like, yeah. I thought this was like, the... oh, we're going to like really introduce him to the audience so that like when Ahsoka comes along in a couple months... We're, like, ready to dive in with it, right? Yeah. And it didn't happen, and I was like, that's interesting, especially because this episode, this last episode was very short. Yeah. It was only, like, a half hour long, and, like, I'm pretty sure all the other finales of all the other Star Wars shows have been much longer by comparison. Yeah. So I feel like that was kind of left there, and it's interesting that we didn't get it. Maybe it's something that they cut out. I don't know. Maybe they did, because, yeah. I, again, I feel like the setup was definitely, like, there, there mm-hmm. and then we didn't, like... I, even if we didn't go to Thrawn, like, I expect us to, like, hit the Imperials one more time and be like, what are they doing? Mm. Now that everything's in shambles, we don't know where Thrawn is, Gideon's thing just fell apart, like, yeah. surely, like, don't you want to, like, even back to that, um, what's-her-face, you know who I'm talking about. Huxley. Uh, uh Elia Kane, like, we oh, could have gone back to her, right? Like, yeah. there's, I feel like there's a lot of that could have happened right there, and then it didn't. It was very interesting that we didn't have that. Yeah. Like, we didn't get a, like... That's Like, true. what's next for Star Wars at this point? Like, we know it's Ahsoka, but, like, I feel like we didn't get a, like, push to... Push in the direction of Ahsoka. Yeah. Like... It feels like this... <laughs> and, and I don't want to put this out there, but... I, like, it is a very happy ending, yeah. but I didn't, like... It feels like more like we were ending, like, an episode three, and episode six, and episode nine. Like, we were ending, like, the movies would have ended. Like, we right. were giving us, a, like, a happy ending and not a like 
series... When we know there's more to come. Yeah, like, even if there was no more Mandalorian to come, there's more related to this to come. Like, mm. especially now that we know from Star Wars Celebration that the intention is to take the Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and Ahsoka, and all those shows, and culminate in a movie where they take on Thrawn, I suppose. Yeah. Or whatever the big bad, if it's not Thrawn. Yeah. Like... So I don't know why we didn't get that here, because, like, we know this isn't the end of, like, the story going on in this, like, arc with all these TV shows, so. Yeah. I, 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 we needed some sort of teaser, I agree with you. I think especially in a world where we've been conditioned by Marvel movies to expect something more. And we do more. often get teasers out of these, like, little yeah. kind of, like, at least endings that leave us with, like, oh, I could see where they were, like, going next. Like, I, I th- we ended... The last time being, like, the Book of Boba Fett's coming, like, and we knew that. Like, we didn't get a, like... I think they said, like, Boba Fett will return or something. <laughs> I don't think it said the Book of... Because I remember last time... Season 2 ended with him taking over the throne from Jabba. Right. And then it was, like, Boba Fett will be back. Right. And then it just said Book of Boba Fett. Like, that oh, okay. was, like, the... And so, you were like, oh, is that the Mandalorian season three? Like, are we not getting a Mandalorian season that, three? We're getting the Book of Boba Fett. That's like, what I wanted to bring up, because a lot of people online are chatting about how now they're in it, like, it, season four is going to be about Bo-Katan, not yeah. about Din and Grogu. And I'm like, that was the same chatter last time with Boba Fett. Like, I was like, no, like, they're going to do a season Maybe four. we'll get the Book of Bo-Katan. That yeah. would be cool. But <laughs> yeah. The song of Bo-Katan. The song they, they, of Bo-Katan. They, they, they said the a song lot of, of the armor. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. They, they mentioned <laughs> a lot about the songs being sung and everything, which is something, too... Um, <clears throat> Din's going to work for, like, taking case-by-case case things for the Republic and everything, but, um, he also did swear allegiance to Bo-Katan in Episode yeah. 7. Like, he said, like, I'll work for you until your song is sung, or whatever. Like, yep. it was like, oh, he's, maybe he'll have, like, a conflict there between the Mandalorians and the New Republic or something, and he'll have to balance it out somehow. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't think Din's story is over, but I also, no. again, this feels like they were like okay, we're ending this right yeah. here. Like, if you told me this was, like, a series finale, I'd be like, okay, that ending made sense then. Yeah. Like, but well, knowing no. that it's not really a series finale and it's not really even, like, a story grouping ending, mm. like, I don't I don't know why we didn't get a teaser. I don't know why we didn't get something else. Maybe the Shadow Council was supposed to be the teaser. <laughs> like, these other Imperials out there. A couple I guess, of them but that wasn't named. even this episode. That was an episode back. Yeah. Like, like, we didn't really, like, this episode was... All action, and then we had a happy ending. Which is why I'm like, no, it was like the ending of a tr- Star Wars trilogy, almost. Like, we got all that action, and then a happy ending. Like, You never know. Maybe they were going to end Episode 7 on um, the reveal of Gideon in that suit, mm-hmm. and then start Episode 8 with Paz fighting off everybody mm-hmm. and stuff like Like So, like, Episode 7 wouldn't have been as long, Episode 8... You, know, you never... And then they get to the cutting room, and they're like, no, it's more... Meaningful if we end it with Paz, like, now dying and everything. I'm gonna go everything. check what the times are around all the other episodes, just to, like... But yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. We should have gotten more. We should have gotten uh, a, a trailer or something We should have gotten at, a at the Thrawn. End like, I... Like, and maybe that's just because I'm a Thrawn fangirl, but, like, I don't know. It <laughs> no, just feels like it's missing. Like, it was missing there. You don't drop that name in like they have, and tell us that he's coming, like, and then not tease us. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, that's that's cool. Okay, like... Here we go. So, I'm looking at, like, season one of The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Episode seven was 42 minutes. Episode eight was 50 minutes. Okay. Let's look at season two. Season two, 40 and 48 minutes. Mm. So, we're getting a little lower, but... But it was still longer. Yeah. And now... This was 53 and 42, so... Mm. But still, the episode seven was much longer than... Yeah. Like, why wasn't this... A longer episode. A longer episode. I, I, I feel you. And I agree like with you. Like, we have, like, episode three was 59 minutes. Like, there's so many episodes that are much longer than the finale, which should be culminating all the storyline, so it should be longer. Hmm. I don't know. It's well, an interesting... I agree. No, I agree. But do you want to rank the season? Like, do you want to give a score to the season, or...? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know where I'd rank it, or, like... I definitely liked it. I yeah. thought it was good. I think there's some, like, weird stuff going on. I know a lot of people don't like, haven't liked this season because it has felt all over the place. And I'm like, we are doing a lot. And I don't think we're really explaining what we're doing or why we're doing it. Like, it does feel a little chaotic here and there. But I also think there is a through line. And that's really all I asked for. A criticism I have of this season, 
Um, I've mentioned things, and we, we've both mentioned things in the past episodes that we were talking about. I, and I looked this up to see if it was true, but it, I felt like John Favreau, who wrote all the episodes this season, he had mm-hmm. help with some episodes, but he wrote all the episodes. I thought, does he have a child in middle school? Because we had the Morlocks in in one of the episodes. Mm-hmm. We had like from the time machine. We had uh, them having the conch scene where they have to hold on to the thing yes. to speak at the meeting. Like there was, a, I felt like there were a lot of references to school to books that kids read in middle school in mm-hmm. in this season. Uh, now his youngest child is sixteen years old. I had to look up and see, but he wrote it a year ago. Kid was fifteen. Maybe the kid did, was in middle school and and did have to read these books. And John Favreau was like, "Oh yeah, the time machine. I remember. Oh yeah, uh, Lord of the Flies. I, I'm going to throw that in the show." I don't know, uh, and I also. And see, that's what makes this all interesting, too, is because, like, Favreau's really, like, controlling what's going on with all these Mandalorian, Soka, everything mm. that we're, like, we're culminating into that movie. Like, so I don't, like, surely he knows that we're going to be watching this looking for something. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing, too, is that he, like... Also, Ahsoka comes out in, like, a month and a half, well, so, he, like, why wouldn't you... He directed the first Iron Man. Which mm-hmm. had the Nick Fury tease in it. Yeah. So he knows, like, we want that tease. We to... want that. Maybe it came down from Disney. Maybe maybe they were like, no, we got, like, Star Wars isn't Marvel. Like, we're not going to do teases in, in Star Wars 2. Who knows? But I feel like we do get that. And I feel like every other season we've gotten, like, a big name towards the end. Like, a mm. big, like, Star Wars name. Like, we mm. got Boba Fett in season 2. It's like a Boba Fett and, like, Fennec's also there. Like, we got these people here now, right? Yeah. And... You know, Bo-Katan was also, and we got Ahsoka. Like, mm. we got those things, and we got Luke at the end of season one. Blech. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, like, no. you, you know, look, you know, I agree with that, that yeah. I don't like it. But, like, yeah. I don't know why, like, why wouldn't didn't we get that this season? Is it because everybody's complained and, like, we always get these things? But, but I'm like, but Thrawn should be expected, because we know what's next. Yeah. Like, we know that's next. Like, I would have been mad if we saw Ahsoka again, because there's no reason for us to see her right now, mm. like, at all, but... Well, what if she had shown up on Navarro while Din and Grogu are sitting there, and she's like, hey, I need your help with something? I don't think I would have liked that no. either, because I like to think of the fact that she's probably out there doing most of it on her own, because yeah. she's a little bit of a... That's not, true. like, truly a lone wolf, but much more, like... We did get to see the difference between, like, Din in season, in season two and that... Last She's episode. out there looking for Ezra and trying to figure out what Don's yeah. up to. So, like, I... That's basically my opinion. Is That's something that... I'm... Like, if we had gotten Ezra weirdly in this mm. episode, I'd also probably be mad about that. Like, I don't think we needed the Jedi, but again, I think Thrawn would have been the appropriate, like, drop here. Yeah. No, I agree. Or even, like, just a scene of, um... I've... For, I've uh packs or pucks no not hugs um of the other imperial that was talking about thrawn yes a conversation between like a like talking with him over hologram or yeah, something that, i was like, gonna say phone call but yeah, yeah hologram. hologram that's what i that's what like, i was thinking that would have been <laughs> something yeah yeah even even if we don't if thrawn's in shadow and stuff like that and you just mm. see the hologram like the light from the hologram is like you, then you wouldn't even know like people who don't know who thrawn is wouldn't even know that his skin's blue it's yeah, just the light like you would have just gotten, but like you would have gotten a like the voice or something. Like yeah. I would have loved that, being like, "Holy shit, that's Thrawn!" Or he like, opens up his eyes and they're yellow or something. They're <laughs> like, red. Oh, uh, red. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We could have we could have done something like that. Uh, or like not. have them talking about it and have it them be like, "Yeah, Gideon's plans fall apart," and Thrawn being like, "Well, I expected that. Gideon's a fool or something like." Because we all know Thrawn knows every like ten steps ahead of everybody, so he was yeah. probably like, "Yeah, Gideon was useless. I knew he was gonna fall apart." Like, yeah, and his clones wouldn't have worked anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, he was cloning himself. And so he was <laughs> Idiot. Um, uh, I used to call him Gideon. But also, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, that puts him much more into like, and I know Thrawn is in Rebels. Like, we do have him hmm. in like current things anyway mm. but like we've never seen him on the big screen we've never seen him on the small screen we've never gotten him in as a live action actor so yeah. i don't like i think it's going to be a bit more of like a shockwave if we're just putting him in ahsoka like here's our blue skin man it's, it's that gonna, you've never seen it's gonna be great when ahsoka comes out and we're like 
they screwed up Thrawn. <laughs> <laughs> How could they have him? What? Why'd they have a break uh, dance? In I this haven't scene? really like looked into it, but yeah. apparently, like he looks very much like what you would expect Thrawn to look like and sounds yeah. fairly. So, like, I think we're as long as we're writing Thrawn the way Thrawn should be written, I think it'll be fine. But oh. All right. well, that's my high hopes, everyone. Listen I, to me next month when I cry. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's funny because we're in an interesting spot right now. Uh, we're recording this episode the Tuesday before it comes out. But we actually have a bunch of episodes already recorded and edited that I have uploaded to come out next week and the weekend. Mm-hmm. Oh, also, uh, the 14th, the 10th or the 14th, I can't remember, is our two-year anniversary of the podcast. Ooh. So, uh, happy two-year anniversary to us because I didn't know that when we recorded those episodes. But we're just in a weird... Yeah, the 14th. The 14th mm-hmm. of May is our two-year anniversary. Um, but uh, we will be getting back to Once Upon a Time eventually. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't expect us to take this long of a hiatus from it. But we're just in an interesting place right now, I think, where we've recorded episodes. Like, we're... Right now, we're... When people who listen to this, we're the past versions, even though we're in the future yes. of what's going to come out. Um but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I forget where I was going with that. You said something. <laughs> um, anyway, I would say I think this was the second best season of the show. I think the first season is still the best. Uh, season two was okay, but I did not you know, care for the Luke Skywalker cameo and all the other stuff that came along with it. Um, but um, So I, I would give this a 7 out of 10. I think it's a, a good season. I'm hopeful for the fourth season, what's going to, what's to come. I'm hopeful for Ahsoka and everything else that's going to... I'm, I'm hopeful for the Dave Filoni movie that he's going to make. Um, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see where it goes. Uh, do you want to give it a score or do you want to... I think I would give it like a 7 or 8 out of 10. Like, it's pretty good. Uh, my complaints are mostly just like, you know... Give us that little bit more. Give us that little bit more. Mm. Like, you're almost there. Mm. Also, I didn't like the Jack Black thing, but you know... Yeah. I've almost forgotten about it, Star yeah. Wars. What if what if that's what, what the cameo was? Thrawn lands on <laughs> whatever it was, Pazva 15, and he kills Jack Black. Dead. <laughs> yeah. And that, that he says to Lizzo, now you're married to me. <laughs> like, you have a weird, I would accept that. <laughs> you, have a weird, you have a weird culture where if you kill the husband, you get the wife or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, we'll have to see where it goes from here. Um, I'm hopeful for it all, though, and... You know. I guess we'll be back to Star Wars in like August when yeah. Ahsoka comes out. I am gonna check out Andor. <laughs> I haven't I haven't watched that yet. From but from everyone that I've talked to about it, it's the Second Coming of Christ <laughs> as a TV show. I so okay. I'm gonna be like honest about my thoughts on. I watched like half of it mm. and then stopped watching it because I hate Diego Luna, whatever his <laughs> name is, that plays Andor. No, well, I, he's I just. Have... Such a bad actor, I'm sorry. I have good news for you, though. He gets blown up (laughs) by the Death Star, so it's okay. (laughs) He's just so one note with his facial Mm. expression that I'm like, I'm supposed to believe he cares about this? He's not even making a facial expression. Is he angry? I don't know. Is he upset? I don't know. He looks like he's trying to take shit half the time, guys. I don't know why any of you think he's a good actor. I'm sorry. I don't like him. And it ruins it for me. You know who I feel uh, that about as well? Um, What is his name? (laughs) uh, he's He's the kid that does the Star Wars video game that just came out. I say kid. I think him and I are the same age. Calcastetis uh, or whatever? No, I'm no. going to look. Colin something. Moynihan or something. I don't know how to spell Colin. <laughs> yeah, he, play, he plays Cal... Cassettes, or whatever, yeah. but he is portrayed by Cameron Moynihan. I cannot stand him. Um, he was the worst person on Shameless, and he was also the worst person on Gotham, which was a race to the bottom, quite frankly. But but I think he's a terrible actor, and people praise him all the time. I cannot stand him. In like the third or fourth season of Shameless, he just randomly decided, like this character that he's been playing for two or three seasons, he just randomly decided to start giving them a New York City accent. For no, and they're supposed to be in Chicago, 
or Detroit. I can't I can't remember where Shane was, but like he just randomly decided throughout the rest of the seasons that he was going to give the char- character a New York City accent. Um, and like I I can't stand him. I think he's a terrible actor, and people are always pray like oh, and I hope he gets a Star Wars movie and stuff. But and I'm like no, keep <laughs> I don't, I don't want to see him. Um, I guess we're ending on a negative note of, of no, act, of like Star and Wars I don't want to like because I think the things I see from Andor I like. I just mm-hmm. I can't get over that I don't like mm-hmm. Ayo Luna. So I'm well, sorry. Like I like I said, he's he gets blown up on, on uh, what the hell is that planet called? I can't remember now. Uh, Scarif. 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 Yeah. Um. Thank you. But yeah. So you know where his yeah, story I, ends at least. I'm sorry. I'll yes. tell you what. I, I do think. You uh, you mentioned like you can't tell if he's scared, shocked. Yeah, whatever. he doesn't. But have he, a... he's supposed to be. Uh, uh, he's supposed to be a spy. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like... I just. I don't like it. Like it doesn't. Yeah. I don't know. I think when I'm supposed to believe like something matters like from him, hmm. I don't get it, and then I'm like, okay, but like. You want me to believe he's, like, really angry right now. But yeah. I'm not getting angry. I'm getting just, like, blank face. No, I think that's I an actor. I get act- a lot of blank. I think that's an actor thing because they tell actors, it, like, if you take acting classes, when you're supposed to be angry in something, don't get angry. Get quiet because quiet is more menacing. If you if you get angry, it, c- it could give an, it could come off comedic. But if you get quiet, it comes off menacing. I, I don't know. I got about halfway through and yeah. just stopped. And so if we did want to talk about it, I'd be willing to. But, yeah. like, because I do think some of the things I saw later, like, my dad would be watching it. So I do have seen things. I'm like, that's all fascinating. Mm. If we can just ignore the acting, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I think I'm going to check it out at some point. Because I know there's supposed to be a season two of that as well. And then that's it. Like, they said, like, two seasons of that show. And that, I mean, I, that makes sense because the character has to die anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm probably going to check that out at some point. Um, so anyway, uh, regarding our podcast, though, we have a few episodes recorded. <coughs> um, there's one that's going to be very special because it's not uh, in the Disney animated canon that we've been doing so far. But it was something that we've mentioned in a previous episode yes. that Ashley thought we had recorded. <laughs> we hadn't. And we so had those it. of you listening know so, yeah. exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And that's going to be coming out in a few weeks. <laughs> and then we're going to finish up the Disney animated canon, um, which at the time of this recording, we've actually already finished up where we were going up to with that. Because we were, we're not going into the Disney Renaissance. We're going to save yeah. that. The question I have for the audience, and if you want to write into us, maybe I'll put a poll up on Instagram or something. Should we dive right back into Once Upon a Time Season 2, or should we finish up Game of Thrones? <laughs> because I am a completionist, <laughs> and it bothered me. <coughs> um, we'd probably only do one or two more episodes to wrap it up. We have two episodes recorded that I've just never edited, um, because in the one episode we got into an argument. We got into an argument. Yeah, because I was being a fascist, um, <laughs> and I had to have control of everything. Uh, I I think I was right though that we were going doing too much. We were yeah. doing too much yeah. with the thing, and we should have just been doing it how we're doing it now. Yeah, yeah, we were doing too much, and it wasn't going well. Yeah, but we're uh, we're figuring this out as we go along. So yeah, I'll, maybe I'll put a poll up on Instagram when the time comes. But we're either going to finish up Game of Thrones one or two episodes to just wrap it up because I'll like, tell you my thoughts on it after we've done recording hmm. and and then. Event we will get back into Once Upon a Time season two. It's so funny because when we finished season one, I said we're going to take a break for it for a few weeks, and then like a year, a year, <laughs> a year and, and a half, half later, later, yeah, we're finally going to get back. <laughs> Technically, a few weeks, you know, um, but yeah, it, it will be the Once Upon uh, a Time podcast. Uh, you know, once again, uh, pun intended there. And that's all I have to say about that. Is there anything else you want to discuss about The Mandalorian before I wrap it up? Or I think we're going to wrap it up. This okay. is a long episode for us. Yeah, well, that concludes this week's episode of the Once Again Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Any questions, comments, or critiques can be addressed to our email at onceagainpod at gmail.com. Follow us at Once Again Pod, all one word, on Twitter and Instagram. If you are feeling generous or would like to contribute to the podcast, we have several tiers available on patreon.com slash onceagainpod. Also, a like and a share would be greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a wonderful day. And remember, we will entertain you. We will always entertain you.
Rumpelstiltskin always says that magic comes with a price. But for this price, you can get a nice piece of jewelry. Use code ONCEPOD for 10% off your first order at Unusual Magic Jewelry on Etsy. Click the link in the description. 